Good day, it is Stephen David here and in this video I will discuss with you how to create a cash flow report for Project Libra. At the very start I must tell you that Project Libra do not provide and does not have a cash flow statement or report and that you therefore will need to create one and this is a solution of how to create a project cash flow report. You start off with uh, creating an Excel spreadsheet file from the relevant uh, Project Libra data. Go then to your project uh, file that you want to create a cash flow report for. Select the Gantt sheet and on the Gantt sheet you must ensure that all uh, the tasks are expanded and not rolled up. Because if it is rolled up it means that you may not copy the relevant tasks and therefore see to it that it is expanded and the plus sign does not show. Then go to Excel or whatever spreadsheet you use and open the spreadsheet. Then copy from Project Libra uh, one col a column at a time uh, the columns at the start date, uh, the task cost, then you leave a column open and then you also copy uh, the task name. This you copy into the computer memory using Control c and Control v You copy this into the computer memory using Control v to copy it and then Control c to insert it. And here then is the data as you have inserted it into your spreadsheet file. Column A contains the dates, column B contains the task cost, column C you leave empty because later on you will use it to add a cumulative cost column and the data and column D is then for your project admin. Excuse me, column D is then for your task name. Having copied all your data into the Excel spreadsheet or whatever spreadsheet you use, you will now have to prepare your Excel spreadsheet. You go then and select uh, the cost column and then also find the find and replace facility on uh, the Excel and then you click in the find what but, uh, uh, box uh, the dot wildcard find dot wildcard and in the replace window you put nothing because you just want to clear uh, the uh, cost column so that all these uh, data at the back of the dot is not shown. Thereafter you must Format the cost column to show numbers and here it is uh, you go to format cells and numbers number and you select the number with the two decimal places then you go and in the E column directly next to the task name you have the numbers 1 2 3 or 4 or 5 and then you extend it until the end of the series of data that you have. The reason is that if you automatically pull it down and it will fill automatically, the numbers will correspond with the project task number as it is in Libra. And uh, it is not uh, really possible to copy that uh, column directly as you had done with the other data. But this is then a workaround uh, just to have the project task name there. Go then and uh, include a row at the very top, a header row. And in the header rows, you put the opposite the start date, the start date, uh, a header of the cost, the cost date. And in C, the column that you left empty, you put there the cumulative cost and in D, the task name, which it is 
and in column E, which you constructed, you put then task number. You then delete all summary tasks that you have. The reason that you delete all summary tasks is that summary tasks only are rolled up costs of the specific uh, cost constituting it underneath it. And if you have uh, the summary tasks, it will only uh, then result in a double count. So delete all the summary tasks that you have. And for this purpose, it is a, a very good idea always to start from the very, uh, when you start uh, writing your task at the very beginning, to write your summary task as uh, cap in capital letters, so that when you need to do uh, uh, and create a cash flow statement, that you immediately see it's a summary task. Also, uh, because of the project, uh, the difficulties that uh, Project Libra presently give with uh, uh, some roll-up costs, it is better than just to have uh, uh, indent uh, at one level. Uh, the first level is a summary task, and then you just indent it once. Do not go to an indent level three or four, that's what my, I, uh, I propose, because the, the cost then is a little bit uh, uh, thrown out, because Project Libra at this stage, in terms of its roll-up, uh, uh, the costs is uh, uh, there's a weakness as far as I'm concerned and uh, it's my better just to have two uh, levels level one you write in, in capital letters so that you see it's a roll up task and then when you delete it you have uh, and then prevent a double count you next delete all zero costs uh, such as uh, uh, meetings, etc., milestones, anything with a zero in has no value in terms of the cash flow because it doesn't add or extract anything. You then sort your database based on the starting base from the oldest to the newest. The reason is then you will get the way the cash flow is going from one to the last date uh, in your project and uh, otherwise you may end up with a date in between that's not uh, necessarily so sorted from the start to the finish. Your next major step is then to get a concept graph of the type 3D cluster and uh, for this purpose you select the start date and the costs and then go to the chart facilities and then create a uh, uh, 3d uh, clustered uh, graph or whatever graph you suited uh, i must stress that uh, the purpose is not necessarily to go into detail how to create graphs or use uh, excel the purpose is uh, to show you how to create a uh, cash flow statement from Libra and for Libra and the assumption is that you know then more to handle Excel. You then have to refine your concept graph uh, and uh, in order to refine it uh, start with uh, then and have a control cell a control cell uh, so that you can know the if you uh, maybe make a mistake when you try to break down big numbers and you uh, therefore just take uh, the total of uh, the column and then you just copy the value into the controls uh, cell. Uh, the reason why you have to con uh, copy the value there is simply because uh, uh, the value doesn't change, it remains as a value. Then you uh, create just above it the uh, auto sum. In fact, uh, you will have to create the auto sum first. The auto sum then just sum all the costs in uh, the uh, cost column and uh, it gives you the total so that uh, if there is a deviation um, between the auto sum, which is uh, dynamic, 
and the control column, then you know you made somewhere a mistake. Just to note that uh, the amount in your control cell uh, and the auto sum must be the same as the baseline cost in your project summary. In this instance, uh, it, I used another uh, uh, example here, so the baseline is not necessarily the cost are the same. But when you work with the same uh, project, you, you, the baseline cost as it is in your project summary must be the same as it is in your uh, sum of the cost when you use uh, the cash flow statement. And then part of your refining of your concept uh, graph and is to break down uh, maybe uh, the overheads uh, that uh, may be a big portion, break it uh, in smaller parts. Maybe if you want to spread it over the project of one year, you can spread it over 12 months or four for a quarter or depending on the size of your project. The reason is that uh, if that uh, big amount, for example, of the um, project over it is at the very start, uh, it gives uh, a wrong uh, view actually of the cash flow and you want to see how the costs flow out over a regular basis and how it, uh, uh, okay, we at this stage, we do not give attention to the inflow of the cash. Uh, but. Uh, uh, remember, this is uh, not a perfect way, it's a workaround uh, to deal with the present the shortcoming in Project Libre. Uh, because some costs, maybe uh, not all costs are not necessarily prorated at the start. Some costs may be prorated at the end, or some costs may be prorated during the whole uh, uh, accrued, excuse me, it may be accrued during the whole process, uh, it may be accrued on a prorated basis. So uh, when you have your big amounts of overhead, project overheads, you try then to make provision for the way how it may be accrued uh, on uh, over the duration of the project. You may also break down a bigger uh, amounts uh, into more uh, 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 consumable chunks that means if those bigger amounts uh, will be needed to be uh, and are procured in fact at the very start if those big amounts are procured as a, at a specific date you must leave it there otherwise you will not get a correct uh, uh, cash flow statement In the above example, I uh, used 40,000 and uh, this 40,000 I broke then in four smaller parts of 10,000 each over four months. I spread it so that you have a better uh, idea then of this is the way that the money will be uh, accrued. You go then and uh, extremely small amounts, extremely small amounts, uh, which have no real purpose, uh, in, 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 but which only then makes the histogram or the graph that you want to construct. It um, just throw it out because the small amounts mean that you can't necessarily see the top graphs. Uh, the decide on a cutoff amount. In this case, I use 500 perhaps, or whatever cutoff amount you have. I don't want amounts less than this to show. And then you take uh, amounts uh, that's below your cutoff, in this uh, uh, case 500, and then you add it to the previous uh, uh, date and event. You add it to the previous um, date and uh, task, uh, because if you add it to at a later uh, task, it, uh, it it may uh, get the, you may get the impression that uh, the cash amount is due later. In fact, while it is uh, due uh, earlier, if you add the cash amount to uh, the previous uh, task, then in the number column just indicate it. 
as numbers in this case number 45 and 46 task number 45 and 46 so that if you can want to go back later on and see what this amount is and you can see but it doesn't correspond with the task then you know uh, when you go back to Project Libra, okay, it does not necessarily correspond, but the reason why it corresponds is because um, the cash flow at this stage consists of two uh, uh, tasks. You go then and uh, you can refine and beautify your graph the way you want it. You can see uh, I used this specific graph for me because it stands out. You also see that the 10,000s are more level because it is spread over duration of the project. Those are relevant to the uh, overheads. And then it doesn't contain the lowest amounts because I had a cutoff of 500, so you have a, a good idea. Sometimes if you had zeros there, it would have been a mess. If you had um, maybe 200, I may make an example. It, the graph would have been thrown out and you can't would not have been able to see the flow as well in addition you can now go and insert a cumulative uh, cost uh, uh, if you want to it all depends on you in order to uh, insert the cumulative cost uh, copy the first cell uh, B in this case, copy it to your cumulative uh, cell, the first one, and then copy it as uh, a simple value. And then in your cumulative cost uh, column, in uh, you just uh, add then uh, C2, the value on top, add with B3. And then you get your cumulative cost for the first uh, two columns. You just uh, copy it down and uh, copy the right down and then you'll have your cumulative costs. Add then a combo clustered graph uh, that you can format and uh, uh, refine as you want to. The combo clustered graph has the advantage that it shows on the one side the costs of uh, the various tasks spread over and on the other side, on the uh, right hand side, it has the cumulative costs and it shows how uh, the cumulative cost and when also when you look at the vertical uh, axis you two axes on the one side of the vertical axis you get the cost of the tasks on the left hand vertical axis you get then the cumulative cost and then on your horizontal axis you get the dates when those costs become uh, uh, active and uh, when you need to, to have it i must admit that, that uh, this at this moment in time uh, it is not necessarily the full cash flow, it's more cash outflow. You will have and can uh, use then your basic Excel to add your uh, uh, incomes from your cash and then you can create from that uh, more uh, a real cash flow. This cash flow report, this is more cash outflow report that you see uh, under graph. If necessary, then based on your needs and your finances that you have available and you then can modify your project plan as and when necessary. Just to recap then, your first step is to copy the data from Libre and to create your spreadsheet. The second step is to clean up that data and to prepare your spreadsheet. And your third step is then to produce your concept draft and uh, graph. And then you finally uh, have your final graph in the first step. And your final step is then to add your cumulative cash flow graph. Thank you very much for watching this video. We love constructive criticism and comments. Please like and share this video and subscribe.